you. Uh, good morning. The June 10th, 2022 regularly scheduled meeting of the Neighborhoods, Education, Civil Rights and Culture Committee will come to order. It is 9.32 a.m. I'm Tammy Morales, Chair of the Committee. Will the Clerk please call the roll? Councilmember Lewis. Present. Councilmember Nelson. Present. Chair Morales. Present. Three present. Thank you. Uh, Council members Strauss and Sawant are excused from this meeting. If there's no objection, today's agenda will be adopted. Hearing no objection, today's agenda is adopted. Uh, at this time, we'll open the remote general public comment period. I ask that everyone please be patient as we operate this online system. Uh, it remains a strong intent of the council to have public comment at our regularly scheduled meetings. However, the city council reserves the right to modify public comments if at any point we deem the system is being abused or is unsuitable for allowing our meetings to be conducted efficiently. Um, I'll moderate public comment period in the following manner. The public comment period for this meeting is up to 20 minutes and each speaker will be given two minutes to, to speak. Uh, I'll call on two speakers at a time. Uh, if you've not registered to speak but would like to, you can sign up before the end of this public comment period by going to the council's website at seattle.gov council. Uh, and the public comment link is also available on today's agenda. Once I call the speaker's name, staff will unmute the appropriate microphone and an automatic prompt of you have been unmuted will be the speaker's cue that it's their turn to speak. Speakers must press star six to begin speaking if you are calling in remotely. We do have two commenters here in person and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, please begin speaking by stating your name and the item you're addressing. As a reminder, public comment should relate to an item on today's agenda. Speakers will hear a chime of 10 seconds uh, when there are 10 seconds left. And once you hear the chime, please begin to wrap up your public comment. If you do not end your comments at the end of the allotted time, speaker's microphone will be muted. Uh, once you've completed your public comment, if you are uh, listening online, we ask that you please disconnect from this line. And if you would like to continue following this meeting, do so via the Seattle channel or other listening options listed on the agenda. Um, okay, so we have two uh, people who have signed up uh, to call in. We're going to go to those two folks first, and then we have two speakers here here in person, so we will uh, go to them afterward. So the first person to speak is Marvin Anderson, followed by Howard Gale. Uh, Marvin, please press star six and go ahead. My name is Marvin Anderson. I'm an architect and architectural historian speaking today in support of landmark designation for the Caton Rebels House. Undoubtedly, this landmark's greatest significance is in its association with Horace Caton and Susie Rebels Caton, who were involved in local and state politics and own the Seattle Republican newspaper. Their story is compellingly told in the beautifully written landmark nomination. But I want to speak as well about two other important aspects of this landmark. First, it is a modest home designed not by an architect, but by the builders, builders who erected it. Although they constitute a large majority of our city's housing stock, modest builder homes like these often go unrecognized and are the first to disappear as the city redevelops. It is important that we recognize and preserve not only large structures significant to Seattle's history, but also smaller homes in which the majority of our population lived. Second, fewer than 10% of designated landmarks in the United States are associated with women or people of color. Susie Revels and Horace Caton were publishers of Seattle's most important black newspaper, for which Susie Revels wrote important articles at a time when women's voices, not to mention black women's voices, were seldom heard. The Caton Revels House is significant to the history of Seattle and to all of Seattle's people and well deserves designation as a landmark. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, the next speaker is Howard Gale. Good morning. Howard Gale with seattlestop.org commenting on the silencing of the Seattle Human Rights Commission through threats from the city attorney's office and the mayor. As council members know by now, the Seattle Human Rights Commission voted over two months ago to seek amicus status in the federal court case involving the consent decree and oversight of the Seattle police. 
in order to inform the court of the near complete lack of police accountability for the abuse and murders of the last few years. Now, 24 hours, not 24 hours after the Human Rights Commission vote in April, the city attorney's office threatened and blocked the commission from pursuing these actions, claiming that only the mayor could allow the commission to take these actions, and further threatening the commission that if they spoke about why they were being prevented from pursuing this action uh, on a fundamental human rights issue, there would be potentially legal consequences. For these last two months, the mayor's office has refused to weigh in or comment on the suppression of free speech and of the suppression of the mandate of the Human Rights Commission. While we have come to expect the council members have abandoned all responsibility for police accountability, we still find it shocking that council members and this committee in particular with oversight of the Seattle Human Rights Commission has remained completely silent in the face of this overtly threatening and suppressive behavior. In a situation like this, silence must be considered consent. Please council members and in particular this committee speak out about this abuse of power and the suppression of the Human Rights Commission mandate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gale. Uh, that is all I have for uh, speakers who are online. Uh, so we will move to in person. Uh, the first speaker we have is Alex Zimmerman. Dear Kyle, Zihail, my dirty damn Nazi fascist ma, ma bandita. My name is Alex Zimmerman. I stay in here with my sign in with my <coughs> yellow star. Yeah, David Star. Yeah. And so interesting for me because when we stay in here, but nobody sees us. So I totally confused because uh, for my understanding, I come in civil, civil right committee, you know what this means. In this civil right committee, acting like a Nazi, Gestapo, and a pure psychopath. Why did they don't show people who care? Like me, for example, in Queen Peril. I don't understand this. And I told you before, 3,000 times, you are Nazi with Gestapo, psychopath behavior. It's exactly who you are, all nine without exception. How is this possible? I go to civil right committee. Is this civil right committee, a president or who is this chair, you know what this means, acting like a Nazi Gestapo psychopath? I don't understand. Why you don't show my sign, Stand Up America? It's a pure political sign. Why you don't show my yellow David Starr, you know what this means? It's a pure political sign. You are anti-Semite, you are a Nazi, you are a psychopath. This is exactly what has happened. And I talk about this 3,000 times, but this 750,000 idiot, slap, is zombie, very quiet, because they're very smart, like council, for the elect same council. Mr. Zimmerman, like are you addressing an agenda item this morning? No, but they don't speak about agenda okay. too. These people yeah, you really need to be moon. speaking to an agenda they don't item. They speak too about agenda. You supposed to be interrupt me, but you don't interrupt two speakers before me. They okay. never speak about the gym. Thank you. Uh, no, but it's exactly what as I told you. The time's expired. So the next speaker is Margaret Richard. Good day, everyone. I'm Marguerite Richard. I'm from Seattle, Washington. I guess what my major concern is that I go to Bellevue and I testify and I do the same thing I do here. They have guards. They don't touch me. They don't bother me. Matter of fact, they probably really do like me because I approve of my free speech. And I'm not going to allow you being over a committee that says civil rights. And right now I have civil rights issues. But let's say, for instance, we'll take that off the map. You're over culture too and education. And all of those areas in which indigenous black people are up under attack right now. And I have to get out of my zone and come down here and tell you what an ethical standard is and a right that God approves of. Because he's the maker of heaven and earth. Huh? And so the pandemic over there doesn't rule 
But over here, you got rules, mask, no mask. Uh, is there something else you want to tell me right now? Because time is filled with swift transition. And I never was playing with you. And I'm really not playing with you now in terms of what is happening in terms of discrimination. And that office is supposed to take complaints, be faithful in the complaints. And if it's something against the law, you go into the law book and you find something that's ethical to say, we can't have this around here anymore. That's plain and simple. So a child can't err from its ways. That's how plain and simple, huh? And so I don't understand all this riffraff. Jim Crow signs down, downstairs telling me Black Lives Matter, but I'm still up under attack. Take those signs down right now, wherever you see them, huh? Because you're not going to separate me and put me in the closet. <laughs> Thank you. We have no other uh, folks signed up for public comment, so we'll close the public comment period now. Uh, Devin, will you please read item one into the record? Agenda item one, Council Bill 120336, an ordinance relating to historic preservation imposing controls upon the Caton Rebels House, a landmark designated by the Landmarks Preservation Board under Chapter 25.12 of the Seattle Municipal Code and adding it to the table of historical landmarks contained in Chapter 25.32 of the Seattle Municipal Code for briefing, discussion, and possible vote. Thank you very much. Um, we have Aaron Doherty here uh, online with the uh, Department of Neighborhoods to share with us a little bit of information about this decision by the Landmarks Board and to share about the house itself. Aaron, please go ahead. Thank you. I'll also say I'm joined, and you can see on screen, um, Kathy Ackerman and Yuri Jones, who are the property owners. And um, we had thought that Harold Woodson Jr. Uh, would be joining us and he may do that um, shortly, uh, but he is the great grandson of Horace and Susie Caton and that is the subject of today's uh, council bill. So this ordinance is to codify the controls and incentives agreement that was signed by the property owners and the city historic preservation officer. The landmark nomination was submitted by the current owners, Kathy and Erie, who are here today and Mr. Woodson also participated in the nomination and designation process. We would also like to recognize Taha Ibrahimi and Ryan Donaldson for their collective research and documentation that are reflected in the nomination application. That document is the source of today's comments. Oops. There we go. So um, we always bring with us the designation standards to reference and we can come back to look at these in detail, but uh, the property needs to be more than 25 years old and the board must choose at least one of the six standards. However, they many times choose more than one. They also need to confirm that the property possesses the integrity or ability to convey its significance. This is the Caton Revels house at 518 14th Avenue East in Capitol Hill between Mercer and Republican. This, was, this property was designated as a landmark by the, preservation, by the Landmarks Board on April 7th, 2021. They selected standards A, B, C, and D. The designated features include the site, the exterior of the house, and the majority of the first floor interior. This house was built in 1902, and as referenced in, during public comment, this was from a pattern book uh, by builders rather than by an architect. This was the home of Horace Caton and Susie Revels Caton from 1902 to 1909. They are known in Seattle history as one of the most prominent black Victorian families. Mrs. Caton purchased the Queen Anne style house from the original builder for $4,500. The subject property is recognized as significant for the importance of the Caton Revels family to Seattle's history. And due to the family's forced departure from their Capitol Hill home, it is also representative of a turning point in the city's treatment of the black community. Susan Sumner Revels Caton was the daughter of Hiram Rhodes Revels, the first black American to serve in the United States Congress. As a young woman, Miss Revels, his daughter, attended Rust University in Mississippi and taught there for three years before returning for her nursing degree. In this time period, she began corresponding with Horace Caton. 
one of her father's former students at Alcorn State. Following graduation, Mr. Caton had moved to Seattle in 1890 and was working as a newspaper publisher. The couple were married in 1896, two years after Mr. Caton started his own newspaper. And beginning in 1900, Susie Revels Caton was both writing for their newspaper, the Seattle Republican, as well as serving as its editor. She is believed to be the first female newspaper editor in Seattle. The Seattle Republican was distributed each Saturday for five cents a copy, and at its peak had an estimated readership of 10,000 in the state of Washington. Both black and white businesses advertised in its pages. The paper focused on politics, community events, and issues of equality and civil rights. Mr. Caton's position and visibility in Washington state made him politically influential, and he was appointed to serve as the first black member of the National Republican Convention in 1896. In the first decade of the 20th century, the Caton Revels were one of three black families living in this affluent and predominantly white neighborhood. And in 1909, a local white real estate agent, Daniel Jones, sued Horace Caton, claiming that he was depreciating the value of the neighborhood's properties by living there. Although Mr. Caton prevailed in the lawsuit and wrote a scathing editorial calling out Jones's racist behavior, Winning the case did not mitigate the harm done to the Kate and Revels family and to their business. Later that same year, their family moved to the Central District and rented out their Capitol Hill home, selling it later in 1912. Advertisements and subscriptions for the Seattle Republican continued to wane. And after the Kate and Revels published a front page article about a lynching in the South, readership and support for the newspaper declined significantly and their offices in Pioneer Square closed in 1913. The 1910 census for Seattle marked the abundant growth of the city in the previous decade, tripling in size. As the city grew, so did anti-Black sentiment within the community. The hostility and oppression that began in 19th century Seattle with the treatment of indigenous people and Chinese immigrants evolved into the systemic use of racial and ethnic restrictive covenants for real estate, the institutional practice of neighborhood redlining by financial lenders, and numerous other forms of segregation and discrimination that expanded throughout the following decades. In spite of the prejudice and hostility experienced by the Kate and Revels family, they would not be silenced, continuing to fight for civil rights through organizing and action and by returning to publishing. Their written legacy is embodied in the Seattle Republican from 1894 to 1913, and later in Caton's Weekly and Caton's Monthly from 1916 to 1922. And these are among the best historic sources of documentation for Seattle's late 19th and early 20th century history. Thank you for my, allowing me to speak about the bill. And I would now like to pass the mic to Ms. Ackerman and Mr. Jones and Mr. Woodson if she has joined us. So Erie, if you want to turn your mic on, if you and Kathy have comments. Hi, this is Ira Jones. I'm one of the uh, co-owners of the uh, Kate and Rebels House. And um, I'm just here to strongly reiterate what Aaron said and also what Mr. Anderson said earlier. We've been uh, the owners, but probably more importantly, we've been the curators of this house for, for a, a couple of decades. And uh, we found out about its historical significance pretty early on after we bought it. So we've been, our intent was always to have it historic have historic status and we've been keeping it up and keeping it architecturally intact and just, just trying to preserve it um, for the sake of this important connection, not only through Seattle history, but it's a through way through American history from the Civil War, slavery, reconstruction, the great migration North and West, and then Seattle history, the early uh, history of African-Americans in Seattle, early history of publishing, early history of women writers and women publishers. Uh, so we think it's very critical, particularly in Seattle, which does not always do the best job of acknowledging its history, that we keep this house intact and recognized as a place to acknowledge all the history and stories that lie within the house, including visits by Booker T. Washington, among others. Harold, Harold do you wanna speak now? Mr. Wood said your mic is, can you turn your mic on? All right, 
Can you hear me? Yes. And what was the question now that I just got in? Or was there just a comment? If you wanted to offer comments about your family's history of the property and any other thoughts you may have, you're welcome them. Well, thank you. Um, it's been, it's been, it was important, you know, that this uh, house was recognized, uh, meant quite a bit to not only the family, my mother and her maternal grandparents and myself uh, as the, one of the last uh, survivors of, within the family to uh, carry the torch. And well, thank you for letting me speak at this particular point. I just came back from Florida. So I'm on a different time zone in my head here. <laughs> well, let's, uh, we can move forward and stuff. I can come back into it a little, uh, a little later within this conversation. Okay, I can, good morning, Harold. Um, I'm Kathy Ackerman, I'm the other um, co-owner of the home and it's been a privilege to be a part of, of this home, meeting Harold and his mom, Susan. Um, and the house is really special. It was, we were, we were amazed that we could afford it. And Harold, Harold like tells us that they were really amazed that they could afford it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's, it's the right thing to do. It's a landmark that will stand forever for people to know that yes, all people matter. And it, this is, they, they made a big difference in our world. So um, I don't have a lot to say, but I'm very happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Well, it was in divine order that the house went to this couple, to Erie, and uh, they had been the best caretakers of this home and maintaining it to uh, the highest standards of maintaining the originality of the, of the house itself and digging deeper into the history of the home, uh, which was very, very important. There were a lot of things that uh, that it happened, the paperwork that was found within the house, uh, the fact that this house would, had been only uh, eerie, uh, was only the third owner of this house, you know, since the, since, uh, the house was built. And for it to be as intact as it was all the way through the, the century to, to it, what it is today. I've been happy to have been a part of it because each time that there was something that needed to be done, I was included. Call it, including the color of the, pa the paint and what I thought that would be, you know, which, what it would be uh, in aging as far as color uh, fading to its original colors. Thank Mr. Woodson, you. I want to uh, thank you so much for being here um, and, and to thank the current owners for your um, clear interest in connecting with the family and making sure that the family, the descendants of the family had the opportunity to weigh in and to learn more about, um, you know, as you said, papers that were discovered and the history of the house and the, the impact that this family had on Seattle's black community and on the city as, as, as a whole. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Erin, is there any other information you wanted to share? I think that's our full presentation. Yeah. Great. Well, I really appreciate you being here and sharing this. Clearly, this house has uh, an important place in the history of the city, in our cultural and political uh, and economic heritage, um, and really reminds us of the impact that previous laws had that discriminated the, the kind of sentiment you mentioned with, you know, the family being sued for um, really uh, egregious uh, reasons um, reminds us how why it is so important that we move in a different direction and that we make sure we are preserving affordability for neighbors in the city and really um, preserving our history as well. So thank you all for being here. Um, colleagues, are there any questions for the family? Please, Councilmember Nelson. 
simply just to say that were it not for this piece of legislation, I would know none of that history. Yeah. And so this is a vehicle for um, to educate also people about our history. Absolutely. As well. So thank you very much. Um, okay, I don't see any other questions or comments. So uh, colleagues, I move that the committee recommends passage of Council Bill 120336. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Lewis? Yes. Council Member Nelson? Aye. Chair Morales? Yes. Three in favor. Thank you. The motion carries and the committee recommendation that the council pass this legislation will be sent to the June 21st city council meeting. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Devin, will you please read items two to four into the record? Agenda items two through four, appointments 2229, 2250. 2251, reappointments of Dean E. Barnes, Roy Chang, and Matt Impambut as members, Landmarks Preservation Board for a term to August 14th, 2025, for briefing, discussion, and possible vote. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I These are all reappointments. Erin, um, again, from Department of Neighborhoods, uh, I don't believe any of these folks are here. Is that right? And that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay, do you want to go ahead and present on the reappointments? Yes, thank you. I'd like to speak about each of them. And Mr. Woodson, I'll just let you know that your microphone's still on, just so you're aware of that. Thank you. So um, first I'll speak about um, Dr. Barnes. Dr. Barnes has an academic background in business and public administration and over 40 years of professional experience in human resources and finance. For the last two decades of his distinguished career, he served as the Director of Human Resources for Seattle Housing Authority and the Director of Employment Services for the City of Seattle. His dedication to public service includes an extensive list of local and national committees and community volunteer efforts. Dr. Barnes is interested in local history and in the underrepresented, sto underrepresented stories of Seattle and its communities. His service on the Landmarks Board has been greatly appreciated and we look forward to his continued participation. Would you like me to move to the yeah, next go, candidate or do you have questions for me? Okay. Um, Ms. Chang is a licensed structural engineer in Washington and California with over 15 years of experience. She operates her own firm in Columbia City and holds a Bachelor and Master of Science in Civil Engineering. Her current practice is, for, is focused primarily on seismic improvements and retrofitting existing buildings, including historic structures. Ms. Chang's service on the board is also greatly appreciated and we look forward to having the opportunity for her to continue to participate with us. And lastly, um, Mr. Inpanboot is a licensed architect with nearly 20 years of experience in commercial and public projects, including new construction, rehabilitation, and historic restoration of buildings recognized at the local, state, and national levels for their significance. He is a principal at SHKS Architects in Fremont and holds a BA in Architectural Studies. We would also be very grateful to have Mr. Inpanboot continue his service on the board, and he's been um, his contributions are just greatly appreciated. Terrific, thank you so much, Aaron. These are all reappointments. Um, so again, do appreciate everybody's um, willingness to serve a first term and certain willingness uh, to come back and continue to serve the city in this way. Colleagues, are there any questions about any of these reappointments? No. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, in that case, I will move that the committee recommends the approval of appointments uh, 2229, 2250, and 2251. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. Um, Devin, will you please call the roll? Council Member Lewis? Yes. yes. Council Member Nelson? Aye. Chair Morales? Yes. Three in favor. 
The motion carries and the committee recommendation that the council approve these appointments will be sent to the June 21st city council meeting. Okay, we're moving on to the last two items. Uh, we please read items five and six into the record. Agenda items five and six appointments 2109 and 2252 appointment of Stephanie Johnson Tolliver as member historic Seattle Preservation and Development Authority governing council for a term to November 30th, 2023 an appointment of Kenny Pittman as member historic Seattle Preservation and Development Authority governing council for a term to November 30th, 2024 for briefing discussion and possible vote. Great. Um, okay, so we have Stephanie Johnson Tolliver online, and we have Kenny Pittman here in person. But please, uh, if you don't mind joining us here at the committee table. Thank you. Um, I think what we'll do is ask. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. We'll do it right here. Sure. Uh, we will ask uh, Ms. Johnson Tolliver to go first. So if you wouldn't mind uh, just sharing a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving on the Historic Preservation Board. Good morning, council members. It is my pleasure. I am so happy to be here this morning and share why um, it's my honor to commit to joining the board at Historic Seattle. I am the current president of the Black Heritage Society of Washington State, and I lead a dynamic and wonderful board and a large group of membership that supports our mission to preserve and collect the history of Black people from across the region. At the Black Heritage Society, we are the keepers of the largest public um, collection of memorabilia in Washington state that tells the stories and shares the legacies of Black people from across the region. The archive has been building since 1977 uh, with the mission to, as I stated, to collect and preserve the rich history of the state. Um, there came a time in the evolution of the organization that it was clear that we stepped outside the archive um, as a community stakeholder to be an advocate for saving heritage sites and creating awareness for them. And so this morning, I'm so happy um, to have been present to hear the vote to move forward the um, Kate and Rebels House, um, whose significance um, that you've heard about and that we've known about um, for many years. So thank you so much. Um, this opportunity at Historic Seattle um, gives our community voice and support and knowledge to do the advocacy work that is important to maintaining the African-American footprint that helped to build the vitality of Seattle, of this city. Um, I support the research and the investigation of all sites that collectively we recognize as significant. We can only determine the significance when the conversation includes folks of all backgrounds um, that invites them to the table. So I'm also very interested in addressing the standards that guide historic designation um, to include how we look at significance and the integrity of places through an equity lens. So um, again, very happy to be here um, and joining Kenny, um, excited to see you here this morning too, Kenny. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I agree, I think, um, you know, the, the bill we passed this morning is a perfect example of why it's so important uh, to have folks like you here in these decision-making positions, right? So that, so that the, you, there is in, inclusion of all of our community members and so that history doesn't get forgotten as, Councilmember Nelson said that we are made even more aware of the things that we need to know about in the city. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Pittman, please go ahead. Tell us about the Historic Preservation PDA. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair, committee members. This is like old home week for me, having <laughs> worked uh, and doing this for 17 years before I retired three years ago and, and now working for Catholic Community Services part-time. Uh, but 
for the record, my name is Kenny Pittman. And uh, one of the things I'd like to do is Kai sends his regrets. He was not able to be here. He's in California for the son's graduation from college. But I just kind of like to give a, just a quick thumbnail of what historic Seattle is and what we're all about. You know, one of the things that you saw earlier, the presentation about the home, that's what historic Seattle is about, raising awareness of our, our architectural heritage by all groups they we've all all groups have contributed to what we know as seattle today and so we we do our focus through education advocacy and preservation and one of the things that historic seattle does is it actually owns properties like the cadillac hotel and and uh pike place market and washington hall this right up on first hill are properties that were acquired by historic seattle and preserved and then had for different reuse and so they're still part of the Seattle's fabric and we've acquired buildings and provided affordable housing through them. And one of the things about historic Seattle is that we're governed by a board of 12 members, four of them appointed by the mayor, four of them appointed by the governing council and four of them appointed by our constituency. My, in my position, I'm a mayoral appointee and for that period of term to November 30th of, I believe, 2024, and to give a little bit of a background, I retired after about a 44 year of career in government and uh, worked for the state legislature, was a nonpartisan uh, research staff doing housing, trade, and economic development. Worked for the city of Seattle for 17 years. And before that, worked in Walla Walla and Flagstaff, Arizona for about a total of uh, seven years there, three years in Walla Walla, and finished out my government career here in the city of Seattle, which I enjoy and still have very dear friends. And one of them is sitting on the council with there next to you. Uh, and then at, uh, when I retired, I was offered a position at Catholic Community Service as a, one of their associate directors in operations. And so I've been doing that now for the past two and a half years. And as my wife said, you really do make a bad example for retirement. And, uh, but I am looking forward to working with uh, being on Historic Seattle. It's one of those unique things that for my career here, I monitored them and provide technical assistance to them. Now I'm on the board. So I'm just really looking forward to, you know, working with Stephanie and Kai and all the other members and available to any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of your service. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's, it is deep and important. So thank you for uh, for all that you've done, and appreciate that you're willing to now step into this role and uh, and continue to serve in that way. Yeah, I don't know how to retire. Okay, well, <laughs> that's okay. We benefit from that. Um, colleagues, any questions for Mr. Pittman? No questions. I just you're basically a walking history of Seattle in a way. I mean, you, <laughs> I, I I've always appreciated how well you um, lead group process, and so I think that uh, you'll be a great addition. Well, thank you very much. Terrific. Um, well, again, thank you both for being willing to uh, serve the city in this way, and I, I really look forward to working with both of you um, on things that Historic Seattle does. Um, okay. Let's take a vote then. Uh, colleagues, I move the committee recommend, uh, if there's no objection, I'll put both appointments forward. Um, recommend approval of both appointments 2109 and 2252. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, so Devin, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Lewis. Yes. Councilmember Nelson. Aye. Chair Morales. Yes. Re in favor. Thank you very much. The motion carries. A committee recommendation that council approve the appointments will be sent to the June 21st city council meeting. Thank you, Thank you both for being here and really look forward to working with you. Um, okay, colleagues, that is the agenda for today. Uh, this does conclude the June 10th, 2022 meeting of the Neighborhood Education, Civil Rights and Culture Committee. Our next meeting is July 8th at 9.30. Uh, thank you for attending. It is 10-12 and we are adjourned. Thank you.